So let's dive into this latest report and get you a pulse check on what's happening on the ground here in Davos for a first on CNBC interview with Richard Edelman, the CEO of Edelman. Richard, welcome into the program. It's great to have you here today. Glad to be here. To me, the trust barometer this year is so important because this is right in the wheelhouse of business. We know how to innovate, but we have to focus as much attention on the adaptation and adoption as we are on the innovation itself because invention is not enough. We can't assume that this is going to be adopted because people are nervous, whether it's across mRNA or artificial intelligence or GM foods or green energy. They don't quite see sufficient regulation by government. They don't understand what it means for them. They believe that scientists are talking to the elites and not to them. And we've got to get past that. We've got to make people appreciate that this is something great for society. But at the moment, in the trust barometer, two to one, people say across 28 countries, this is being poorly managed. So what are the factors that have led to this decline in trust, particularly when it comes to business, corporates, politics, the media, government institutions? Why have we seen such a deterioration in respect and trust within these institutions? So business is still the leading institution in trust. It is 50 points more competent than government, 30 points more ethical. But this is a warning signal to business this should be our lifeblood. This should be our ability to get back to trust because the high performing economies in the developing world are outpacing the developed economies by far in terms of trust in institutions. Innovation will enable the, develop, the developed countries to come back. Uh, but you asked the right question. What is causing this? People don't understand the tangible benefits to them and they have PTSD from the pandemic. Right. So because how, how, that was a problem. So, so how do you rebuild trust then, particularly for business? We need to have scientists lead this discussion, but we also need to have non-traditional authority figures, pastors, pharmacists, informed, because trust is actually local now. It's top-down, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, but it's very much local. I need to see someone to understand. Also, I think business needs to accept good regulation. Absolutely clear that if we have a, a good playing field, then business can make sure that innovation is good for everyone. Mm. And this is, of course, a key theme at the World Economic Forum here in Davos, Richard. It's something that you have really been focusing on over many, many years yeah. now. What would you say are the central themes for this particular edition of the World Economic Forum conference here in Davos? What are you going to be looking at specifically? We have an unacceptable mass class divide. Um, we have an infodemic where, you know, CNBC, of course, is trusted, but, you know, a lot of material gets um, onto social media that's not so um, authoritative. Um, and we also have an imbalance between business and government. And, you know, government's got to come up uh, in people's minds as to effective and tangible and not so divided. Hmm. Also wanted to ask you a couple of Because we have 50 things. elections. Yeah, this exactly. Year. I mean, democracy absolutely on the agenda. Uh, and this innovation year as well. is going to be on the ballot. Indeed, indeed. Look, before I let you go, I wanted to ask you a couple of other things. The first is about U.S. politics mm. because we've just seen President Trump taking out the Iowa caucuses. Um, look, Nikki Haley coming in third. Uh, we've seen uh, Ron DeSantis coming in second there, and Vivek Ramaswamy pulling out of the race. To what extent will this be shaping the conversation here at WEF and how will it influence business thinking throughout the course of the year? One of the findings from the trust barometer that fascinated me is that Republicans are 40 points less likely to adopt the innovations of green energy, for instance, small nuclear electric vehicles, um, because there is a sense, again, that they're change in values, that it's not necessarily good for, you know, my standard of living. Um, and so, look, we're going to have to adapt to more nationalism, um, more of a sense of, of insourcing, uh, and maybe less global trade. Mm. I'm also looking at WEF this year from a very Middle East perspective. It's home for me, yeah. geopolitics front and center. What we've seen is a real increase in geopolitical tensions, not only after Israel's war against Hamas in Gaza, but of course these attacks in the Red Sea and the situation are on the ground in Ukraine as well. So to what extent is this impacting some of your business decisions particularly? You've got a sizable business in, in the Middle East, in particular in the UAE and, and Saudi Arabia. Is this influencing your decisions? 
Look, I think the presidency of the COP28 was a great marker for um, the Middle East, for the UAE in particular, and Dr. Sultan led that um, to a very successful conclusion. Saudi Arabia is one of the three or four most important sort of central countries. India, Brazil, Indonesia, and Saudi are sort of the swing ballots between the Chinese bloc and the American bloc. The, the Middle East is absolutely going to be our second market in, um, in the EMEA region. Right. Um, does it influence your decisions, though, and, and um, what do you think is going to happen next with some of these conflicts? I think that we just will carry on um, because this is a major market opportunity. Mm -hmm. People have money. They want to be part of the world. Uh, and, you know, look what, what Saudi's doing in its own transformation. It's stunning.